Okay, welcome everyone. I know we're all getting onto our Zoom for hopefully not the first time today, but maybe, maybe. So we're gonna give everybody a couple minutes just to join and we've got a jam-packed hour plan. So uh, thanks for joining and we'll get started in about a minute or two once everyone's hacked their way into the, to the Zoom. Um, while everyone's joining, just a couple quick housekeeping items. If nothing else, there's some great people on here to build your network. So feel free to introduce yourself on the chat and include your LinkedIn link. We have people joining from all over the world in various talent and people, DEI type roles. So a great chance to build your network. Uh, and you can do that just by introducing yourself on the chat and including your LinkedIn link. Uh, we're also going to try and squeeze in some time from the audience. Uh, thanks for those that have already submitted their questions. We've incorporated a lot of that into the content. And if you do have questions, you can use the Q&A or chat. And kind of at the end of our hour together, I'll try to uh, leave time to, to jump into some of the audience questions. Great. So welcome everyone, uh, and uh, excited to to introduce you to, to the team at PwC, who's done some incredible work around connection and building relationships and removing all the geographic barriers to that. And we're going to start in about a minute, but before we do that, feel free to introduce yourself on the chat and include your LinkedIn profile as well. Uh, we've got a great group of of participants uh, from all different types of roles to uh to connect with it seems uh it seems like our chat is going to be enabled shortly for participants. So if you can't uh, introduce yourself on chat, no worries. We'll just adjust the back end so that all of our participants can, can use that. So why don't we get into it? Because I know, uh, I know the, this time kind of flies by. Uh, and we've got some amazing panelists here to jump into this topic of connectivity, which if you open up Harvard Business Review or any kind of workplace uh, media publication, we're all reading about connectivity and its impact on engagement. So uh, looking forward to jumping into it. I think uh, what we'll do before we get started, I think it's important to start with a land acknowledgement, uh, uh, especially given, um, given the time. So we acknowledge the land we are meeting on as the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississauga of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Hoot and Ishno, and the Wet'enap peoples, which is the home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto uh, is covered by Treaty 13 by the Mississaugas of the Credit. Uh, and so with that, uh, let's jump into our webinar. And I, we've got a surprise guest uh, that's joined us first, which is uh, Chris Dolney, uh, who's offered to jump in because I, it feels like yesterday, uh, Chris and I were on calls uh, mid remote and Chris was one of the first leaders that just brought this huge vision around connectivity and it's a really full circle moment to now be fully scaled enterprise wide. Uh, but Chris, thanks for joining us and I'll let you uh, kick off. Dave, uh, good to see you. Uh, welcome everybody. And you're just reminding me how old I'm getting because it just seemed like yesterday, but uh, uh, time has flown by. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to jump on and talk a little bit about the PwC story from the seat I sit in as the Chief Digital Data and Innovation Officer. And um, as the pandemic uh, was put in front of us, we saw it as a huge opportunity to redefine what work was at PwC. As I like to say, we, you know, you never try to waste a good crisis, right? So we jumped right in. Um, there was this conversation happening in business on the back of the first wave of the pandemic, which was, well, how many days do I get our people to come back into the office? And to me, that wasn't really where the valuable part of the thinking was. It was really, you have a chance to change the value proposition for your people. 
And why was that? Because I recognize across PwC, everybody's mindset had changed. Um, suddenly, our senior leaders and everybody was realizing it was a completely different way of work because they all had to hack through that in their daily lives. So, hey, as the data lead, I took the opportunity to rip out every printer in the office and every phone line and everything else that was physical presence. But more importantly, we looked at how digital solutions could offer our people a different proposition. Um, really going after meaningful connections that were broader than the historic silos everybody saw themselves in. Suddenly, office, di office dynamics mattered a lot less. Suddenly, geography mattered a lot less at PwC. So Dave and I started talking about 10,000 copies at scale in PwC, and it's been an amazing success. Um, so pleased uh, with where we've gone and creating valuable connections for PwCers right across the country um, and really intentional connections where previous to 10,000 copies, we didn't even know a connection should be made. We call the platform PwC Connection Central. And I'll tell you one more big result in our organization. Our CEO, Nick Marku, is maybe the biggest super user of the platform. And as an innovation lead, I can tell you it is not often that you put a digital solution in place, a transformation in place, and the CEO is the biggest proponent. So there's something special here at PwC. So um, I just wanted to give that introduction. I wanna turn it over to two leaders in our firm uh, who lead the charge on everything that is the future of work. I wanted to introduce a partner of mine, Sula Corliss, who's also, uh, Sula, how would you describe it? Uh, double hatting, moonlighting as our chief people officer at the same time at the moment. Uh, and Sarah Blanchard, a director in the practice, um, who will give you some deeper insights in, in uh, this world of connectivity we're all driving. Yeah, thanks. thanks for joining us, Chris. And uh, maybe I'll pass it to Sula and then to Sarah, just do a quick intro and, and hello. Um, and congrats, Chris, on, on rolling this, this out. A lot of people have ideas, and it's been amazing to see that idea actually turn into impact um, in this full-scale rollout. So congrats to you and the team. And, uh, and Sula, maybe I'll pass it to you for the first intro. Sure, thank you. And thanks, Chris, for uh, for the double hatting. Absolutely, it is uh, it is uh, clearly double hatting. Um, and, and, and thank you for those remarks, putting that into context. Um, I recently joined PwC back in March. So having uh, having had exposure to Connection Central and the power of, of this platform has been really um, something special. You use that word, Chris, and I, uh, I truly believe that for for our people and for our firms. So um, yeah, I know that's, uh, I'm super thrilled to be here to have this conversation. So as uh, as Chris and Dave uh, mentioned, my name is Sula Curlis. I'm uh, currently the interim chief people officer for the firm. And, uh, and one of my biggest priorities uh, right now as I'm sitting in this seat is to help refresh and, and, uh, and recommit to our employee value proposition for our people across the firm. Um, bringing to life our new firm strategy and really focusing on the things that matter to our people around meaningful connections, meaningful work, meaningful rewards, and of course, development. Uh, those are the pillars of our strategy. And I'm, um, and I'm, you know, just thrilled that as a firm, we see our unwavering commitment to the importance of, com of, uh, of um, connection and connectivity. And again, just thrilled to be here to talk about that. So thank you. Great. And yeah. hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Sarah Blanchard, and I am part of PwC's Workforce of the Future Consulting Practice. So really what that means is I'm working with our clients to help them kind of shape that workforce experience for the future. What skills are they going to need? What, what tools are they going to need? What capabilities? So really excited to be here today to share a little bit of what I'm hearing and seeing in the market um, and some of those, how we're kind of translating some of those current concerns into action. I also spend a lot of time talking about culture. So really thinking about how do we optimize our ways of working in support of you know, our goals and the things we want to accomplish as an organization. So um, this is a very hot topic. I can tell you I'm having lots of conversations about collaboration and connection. So really looking forward to sharing some insights with all of you today. All right, so we've got just a, a, a couple uh, housekeeping items again. So for those that have joined, feel free to share your questions directly on the chat or using the Q&A functionality. We have a pretty full agenda, but we always like to pull a few extra questions from the audience. So feel free to use that. And my quick intro is that I'm Dave Wilkin and I'm the co-founder of 10KC. And for those that don't know who 10KC is, we are a talent experience platform for mentoring, employee connectivity and skills development. And so we built our organization, I, I often say long before it was as cool as the pandemic made it, 
where we saw that relationships and connectivity was at the center of great culture, great opportunity, uh, and great career, um, careers overall. Yet it's these experiences that are often left to serendipity or really manual approaches, which have you know, tough consequences on cultures, employers, and even just people's careers. And so 10 kc is the first platform in the world for organizations like PwC to build, manage, and measure any type of mentoring, connectivity, or skills development program. And so today we get to really dive in on our connectivity solution and see kind of the many different legs that it's had with PwC to ultimately drive that employee value proposition and to help uh, not only the CEO, but thousands of colleagues be able to get those connections in smart, deliberate, and impactful ways. So looking forward to, to diving into all of that. And maybe to kick things off, let's just start with the, we'll take our, you know, ourselves a few, a few steps back and think about the bigger picture here and how connectivities become a central part of your people strategy and, uh, and what that looks like. So thanks, Dave, and I'll take that. Uh, I'll take that first question. And again, thank you for the opportunity for us to tell our story through this webinar. Um, always a pleasure to talk about um, talk about what we're doing. Um, as I had um, made a little connection and connectivity, really truly is core to our values. And we know that connection requires empathy, compassion, care, and a genuine interest in each other. And that's why uh, with Connection Central, with 10KC, we're unwavering in that commitment to build and sustain connections with each other and create that culture where people can feel they belong. It's our North Star, so to speak. It really is, it really is true to our, our spirit and to the way we want to, we want people to feel um, when they join us and as they as they work their, through their careers with us. And as I mentioned, um, a key pillar of our firm strategy is and core to our people value proposition is the concept of meaningful connections. And feeling connected is personal and is vital to the sense of belonging and to the retention, attraction, engagement, and development of our people. And our workforce is very diverse and we want all to feel that we are creating a culture of inclusion and belonging by prioritizing how we connect with each other. And this way we'll build sustainable connection from hire to retire, which again is important to us. So all of these elements form the essence of our people strategy. And I, you know, I'll talk more to that as we, um, as we work through this webinar, but um, connection is core to belonging, core to development, core to engagement, core to retention, core to attraction. And all those elements form our people strategy. And we've got um, you know, we have a very compelling uh, proposition. And uh, again, it, it's reinforced by that connection that we are really truly are driving because we care. And that's one of our central values. And we want to be able to lead with that care and lead with the empathy. Pause there. It's, it's, it's so true. And I think that that's probably gonna spark a lot of ideas from the audience where oftentimes connectivity was just left to an open office where hopefully everyone just bumps into each other over the course of a 10 year career. And to your point, connectivity actually lives as a core element to retention, to engagement, inclusion, onboarding, career progression. How, how did we leave something like that to hopefully a water cooler at an open concept office would just solve for all of those pieces. And so it's, it's gonna be exciting in this new chapter post COVID where we don't need to rely on an open concept I mean, they're, they're still awesome, but a serendipitous running over the course of 10 years gets you the connection. So we'll, we'll dive in on that in more detail. And uh, I think a follow on question is, I think things have changed a lot with connection where we knew what that looked like deep pandemic, right? Where we were all working from home and we were self-isolating to hybrid working models and sometimes back and forth between those two stages. And now into what I think we're all looking at as a bit more of a new normal and a new approach. Uh, a, a thought for you and a, a question is like, how, what does connecting look like and how has it changed kind of through those different phases? Yeah, I know that's, uh, that, that's a, a great question. And, and, you know, I think we've all seen and experienced how the pandemic has dramatically shifted our view of the where, what, why, how of work. And even Chris alluded to this um, in his opening remarks as well. And it provided that space and opportunity pretty much for every demographic across the workforce to pause and consider what's important across our you know, women, men, visible minorities, our BIPOC communities, LGBTQ2S+. You know, since COVID, um, 
you know, we've been focused on driving, again, that high connectivity with our clients and our people leveraging technology like the majority have. What we've also tried to do is drive connection at the human level. And I think that's been one of the biggest changes. That, like since we we're all working virtually and digitally, being online and working, you know, working with technology can give the impression of being connected, but in fact, it was a mechanical connection, not a human connection. And this is where, you know, we were driving, we wanted to do something different and, may, and really drive that, um, that, that nuance home with leveraging this platform. And we did a few things as, as a result, as well as that. And we developed um, what we're calling our internal ways of working microsite, where we provided guidance on supporting how to work effectively in a hybrid environment, uh, team agreements, guidelines, templates, and coaching tips for leaders on connecting with their teams, again, at that human level. And we've been very deliberate on how teams collaborate and how to replicate a bit of that in-office culture uh, for remote workers, again, leveraging technology. We, you know, for example, you know, we give people clear guidance on very tactical things like coaching those who are leading meetings to encourage participation from folks who are both virtually as well as physically in an office space. And we also know that, you know, for example, Gen Z, different cohorts, remote work is about continuing those connections built in person, still maintaining a flexible schedule. So these kinds of needs influence many of the decisions that we make, whether, you know, whether there are decisions around how we're going to design their workspaces when people do start to come back more in person, in office, onboarding support and development opportunities, all important considerations that impact everyone. So it's an extension of those human connections and what's really meaningful virtually to how we can continue to replicate and take advantage of that, leverage that when we do start coming back a bit more in person. And this is why, you know, the 10KC uh, platform and this and this experience is so key to finding connections between people with things that they have in common since it builds that understanding, empathy, and compassion for one another and continues to, uh, will continue to spill over into those in-person, but also foster some, some other continuing conversations um, virtually as well. So since the pandemic, I think, you know, just to kind of sum it up a little bit, it's, um, I think we've, I think we've all learned that connection, that human connection is vital. And it was displaced for a very significant period of time while we all kind of found our footing with leveraging technology that is meaningful to each other and knowing that it's not just to have meetings, but we need to leverage it to get to know one another. And that has become, um, it, it's become like, I can't explain it, but it, it, it's absence. It's really, we've really noticed how vital it is for for us as social beings to connect, to grow, and to develop, we need to have more than work talk when we leverage technology. So this is what this, you know, this platform has also done for us, so getting to know each other. Yeah, I love that. And I think we're going to launch a, a poll question. So for everyone in the audience, we'll have some polls and we'll, we'll share some of the results as a follow-up uh, so that you can have, hear what, what the audience is saying. Uh, but the first poll question is, what question is, what's your company's biggest challenge as it relates to hybrid remote work and would love to get everyone's thoughts on that well while we're waiting for I think Sula something that I know you Sarah and I talked through is the difference between being connected and human relationships and I think a lot of heads of talent or CIOs uh, think well we're all connected so everyone should have connection but it's different that's very different than having relationships and maybe a question for you, Sarah, before we get to the, the next kind of uh, the next question is like, how would you, you know, you're sitting in front of an audience of directors of talent or VPs of talent, help us understand the difference between being technologically connected and actually having relationships? Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a great question. And I would say some of the things that really stand out to me is as I think about what employees want. They want to feel supported. They want to feel valued. They want to feel like they're cared about as a human when they come to work. And being able to, you know, operate in a way that we show that care for employees and implies that we really understand them as a person, what matters to them. And so, you know, when I think of connection, it's really about taking the time to invest in building that relationship so we can support each person in a thoughtful, more targeted way versus taking that one size fits all approach. So to me, that's really where the, the difference comes in. Yeah, it's a, it's a th thanks for jumping in on that. Cause I think that's what a lot of people might hear, right? Is like, we're so connected. We have Slack messages or teams and all of these things. And that's, 
that shouldn't be confused with what we're talking about here, which is actually relationships that drive careers and inclusion and culture. And, and uh, I think that's a good segue to uh, one of the next questions is like, tell us about, so 10KC within PwC is called PwC Connection Central. And so maybe give us the, the crash course on, on what it is. Sure, happy to. And I and I recognize I was using the words interchangeably earlier, so I hope I didn't uh, I didn't confuse folks. So um, yes, our uh, our version, our application of uh, 10, 10 KC is is PwC's Connection Central, and it is a platform powered by um, ten thousand copies, ten KC, uh, to facilitate our um, our commitment to meaningful connections. So we started with a pilot with our Black, Indigenous, People of Color inclusion groups um, last year. And our, our BIPOC committee had told us that building their network and profile in the firm was a key priority. And therefore, we couldn't think of a better group to host the pilot. And again, this, uh, this goes back to what um, Chris was referring to in terms of uh, that innovation and the work that we wanted to do as a firm to, to connect folks through technology. So the pilot launched in March of 2021, and because of its success, we rolled it up firm-wide. And in fact, uh, we're celebrating our one-year anniversary later this month in October, which is uh, fabulous. So our, our, core, our platform has two core features. Um, the most prominent feature is what we call smart introductions, which match you with colleagues and leaders based on your common interests and goals. And participants receive a new introduction every six weeks. And I know you've used the word serendipity, Dave, and to be, and to be frank, I, I kind of do like a little bit of that serendipity in the office when you don't know who you're going to bump into in the hallway or in the elevator. This to me is a little bit of that serendipity where you just don't know quite who's going to, who's going to, you know, what introduction you're going to have in those few weeks. So a great way of getting to meet people randomly and, um, you know, without, without planning, et cetera. And I, I love that aspect of it. The second element of the core feature is uh, office hours, which are casual small group fireside chats, virtual roundtables, um, asking anything sessions, hosted mainly by senior leaders to get the pulse, to get input, to get people talking about what's on their mind. So these are the two core features that we've used uh, a number of times. And everyone who registers on Connection Central has access to, um, has access to recurring office hours. And a few of the office hours that leaders have hosted include uh, topics such as our digital transformation and winning the market, new benefits, ask me anything series, a uh, session called not all conflicts, not all conflicts are created equal to name a few. And we have sessions planned in, uh, in the coming weeks related to our people value proposition and how to apply what we've heard about what's important to people as they consider shifting the hybrid balance to uh, perhaps a bit more in-person working as well, wanting to, to understand what's on people's minds with that as well. So it's a great venue to, uh, to get real feedback and, and a pulse on the organization. We have 9,000 people, partners, and um, uh, all levels, and it's a great way to reach our, our, um, all of our people. And the benefits are, are opportunities also to, to develop skills, Grow, um, grow our career and network. I mean, I know you're gonna chat about this a bit, David. It's, networking is so vital and it's a way to replicate networking online by learning from colleagues across business units, broadening our knowledge of the firm, learning about strategic projects and other um, initiatives that benefit our own personal growth as well as our clients. So, um, you know, Connection Central allows us to, to thoughtfully design those moments of connection and foster a sense of community and that culture of belonging. And um, it also helps us to enhance uh, well-being and create inclusive experiences and help elevate our experience at PwC. So all in all, great, uh, a great venue to achieve uh, a number of elements of our people strategy and our value proposition and, and provide people with an opportunity to connect in ways that um, they may not have had before. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's awesome to see the continued results. And I think launching to those high priority groups allowed such a great way for people to achieve their different mandates and broaden their network and not just, you know, wait for uh, somebody to potentially bump, bump into another. And I think what Sula had mentioned that I'll call out for the audience is connection looks different for different types of colleagues, right? So there's smart matching where you can set goals and interests and practice groups, leveraging data from platforms like Workday or otherwise, to create the smartest matches. So although it is, you know, feels like serendipity and has that fun element to it, it's actually 
powered by like a 97, 98% match quality score. So that serendipity is actually kind of precise. And I think uh-huh. the other part that I'll, and, and that's a, a congrats to your team and the 10KC customer success team for building that to make sure they are relevant to the PwC audience. And the other part to call out is how PwC has offered specific experiences for more senior leaders, which is what we call office hours. And it's basically group matching or fireside chats like Sula had mentioned. And so what we've loved and something that's been amazing for the PwC colleagues is no matter where you're located, you can actually get access to some of these senior leaders to share ideas about the employee value proposition with Sula. You don't just have to be in her office necessarily. Or maybe you want to meet with someone like Chris to talk about innovation and data and what the firm is doing. You no longer have to be just, you know, right in the same hallways. And so it's kind of taking out the geographic barriers while providing those different formats to different types of people. And I think with that, we're going to launch a second poll question to get everyone uh, sharing some, some thoughts about connectivity strategy. And I guess while, while we're doing that, uh, one of the, the elements I thought was interesting is just how this has enabled the PwC leadership mandate. And so maybe you could share a bit about you know, what that leadership uh, target or mandate might, mandate might be the wrong word, but what does that leadership goal look like? And how is this not added to the leader's to-do list, but actually help them achieve some of those goals they might already have? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely been a, a wonderful opportunity for us to or for leaders and for our whole organization to connect on topics that are important um, for our leadership, for our strategy, for for our plans. Um, you know, and you know, through the launch of Connection Central, we have showcased our ability as leadership to be able to listen and act on feedback, which is critical. Um, I found feedback from our people and a, a key differentiator for our firm. And we know that clearly our employee experience matters and, uh, and you know, include the, the value of that throughout our, the entire uh, life cycle. So for leaders to be able to listen to what the pulse of the organization is, has been absolutely critical. And through this digital investment in the platform, we've also enabled our people to foster some meaningful touch points with different leaders across the organization, across all levels. And with the use of office hours, with the ability, you know, with those, some of those ask me anything at sessions and that smart matching, uh, people can be able to have conversations where they can be their authentic self, you know, be able to ask questions about what it's like to work at PwC in different ways, different forms, so they can build career with purpose, they can they can find about how others are balancing work and life, et cetera. So it's given it's given an opportunity for people for for our leaders to be able to connect with every you know people across the organization, get input into initiatives like the examples I mentioned earlier, but also understand what is going on so that we can demonstrate that we're listening and we're adapting as we go through. But then also gives people their own leadership of their own selves, their own careers, and being able to take that, that level of, of, uh, of leadership, use that word again, to, to learn, to learn from others and learn about what's going on across the organization. So um, I hope that answers that question, but, you know, it's, it's, this is, yeah. And as Chris mentioned too, like our CEO like, is, is a, an avid user of this because he loves to listen to people and understand what's going on across the organization. And that is also being cascaded, you know, more leaders are using it because it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward to use and the output is, is extremely valuable. So um, it's not mandate, it's, it's, an, it's an enabler of all the things that we want to be able to do. I think that's, that's perfectly well said. Like mandate's not the right term, but I think most people that are probably dialed in here have leadership goals to diversify their talent pipelines to get to know the employee voice and oftentimes the way they do things like that is they read excel spreadsheets and powerpoints but instead this platform that and and how you've all leveraged the group matching through office hours is now leaders just check you know can grab a template they can choose a couple times and then they're immediately in front of these colleagues and it's all automated Um, so it's been awesome to see how you've taken those existing mandates or ex- existing goals, but actually enabled them to do it on scale. 
not just with the CEO, although it's amazing to see their pickup, but all these, these partners from all across the firm. Uh, and so I think maybe I'll pass it over to, to Sarah next. I know you're, you're actively listening to, to the voice of the employee and what, um, tell us what you're hearing. And, and I think a second part, once you kind of share what you're hearing is there, there's another question that came up in the poll around technology fatigue. So we're going up to our one year anniversary. Would love mm-hmm. to hear what you're hearing from colleagues. And then two is how's engagement after a year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So maybe I'll start by talking a little bit about what I'm hearing from employees. And I will say that I'm, it depends on kind of who you are and where you are in your journey at PwC. So one of the, the things that's been really great is for people that are new joiners to the firm, it's a great way to expand their network. So right away, you're coming in, you're remote. It's a great tool to start connecting with people kind of within your team, but also beyond your team. And as I think about PwC, we're we're large and we're pretty matrixed organization. So it's also just a really great way for new joiners to learn about the organizations, all of the different pieces, because you never know when you're going to need to go find that expert to help you, you know, on a project or otherwise. I would say for longer term employees, what I'm hearing, it's been interesting. So there's been a lot of turnover kind of across the board everywhere you look. And so for in many cases, even though you're a tenured employee, it can feel like you're a new joiner some days because you're still kind of, you know, learning the names and faces of all of the new employees. So in that case, it's been really great, again, just to continue to build that network, but it's also been really a great way to just continue to expand, build those networks, build those relationships. And we're seeing a lot of interesting things in terms of it leading to informal net, informal mentorships. So um, obviously, as you heard, many of our leaders are using the platform. So some of these connections are leading to informal mentorships, which is really exciting for a lot of our employees. And the other thing is it's kind of learning for op- leading to opportunities to partner. So again, we're, we're in the business of, you know, helping clients solve problems. So we're getting people connected and say, I'm, I'm working on this. I could really use your, your brain to help me think through this problem. So it's been really cool in terms of just breaking down the barriers that way. And then obviously our leaders just love it because it is the way to, to hear the voice of employees, um, what are, what's on their mind, what's important. And it's just really kind of making sure that we know what's happening. We have a, a better pulse on the sentiment and really helping kind of shape the decisions that are obviously impacting, impacting our employees. So those are some things that kind of come to mind as, as you know, what's or what I'm hearing and the things that really stand out. I would also say, I know we talked about the serendipitous element I do think there is kind of a bit of that, even though there's algorithms running in the background. um, I think back to the number of people that I was introduced to through a colleague in an elevator or in in line at the coffee shop, it does kind of simulate that experience, which I really love. Um, And I know that's really exciting for people. So maybe I could talk a little bit about the technology fatigue. I would actually say, so we're a pretty digital organization. And as I talk to you know, many of my friends that are at, at, at other companies, I would say that PLC has a pretty comprehensive suite of technology tools for collaboration, teaming, connecting. So knowing we're a little bit further along, I would say that, you know, I don't think there is fatigue. People find these tools, make it easier for them to do their job. It's easier for them to connect. It's easier for them to team. And so I think that value proposition has kind of proved itself out over time. So we're not seeing as much of the the technology fatigue. I do think people are still looking to have some more in-person so you can kind of balance it out. Um, But I would definitely say that the tech fatigue is not something that I've heard much about. If anything, I've actually heard that people love it and they feel really empowered to be able to do their jobs from anywhere. And if I can just add to that one comment too, um, I'm a big fan of... uh walking meetings and what i think is great where this you know there could be a little bit of technology fatigue let's say there is and it could be there could be definitely pockets of it or sentiment of it for sure but you could take this and and have a connection with someone and while you're walking right again it's you can enable this you, you can you can embed it with your life to whatever's happening in in that particular time of your of your life and and your your of your day of the week uh so being able to leverage that to you know, you're battling the regular fatigue, which could be sitting down for too long, back-to-back meetings, and you can leverage this to, to you know, to, to accomplish a couple of things, movement and connection. So I think, uh, I think it's what we, we, we make of it, right? What we, what we can do with it. 
It's a really good point on, on both fronts where I think, I think a lot of people are technology fatigued because that's the difference between that random connection versus like a meaningful relationship. I think people are tired of just Slack messages and Teams messages galore without actually relationships with their colleagues, which is the real difference with this program. And it's also been amazing to see how people within the PwC Connection Central can set different locations. So if you are traveling to some location, you can actually set preferences. Uh, say you're traveling to Atlanta, you can actually set preferences to meet with people in those different offices. So uh, it is a way to blend the best of hybrid and create matches uh, to, to do that. And I think we've got a, another uh, poll question uh, to for, for the group. So while we're doing that poll question, I thought we'd just take a bit of time to talk through some of the DEI elements of it because I know we're serendipity is is actually a, can be a really good thing and the feel of that it actually makes really organic relationships, which is awesome. But for everybody that's on this call thinking uh, about whether it's their onboarding programs or their new people manager programs, most of the time those programs say, go build your network or go build relationships. We're a relationship culture. And it's as though it's equal for everybody. And I think what PwC Cent Connection Central has done is allowed anybody of all backgrounds or regions be able to get access to that those make or break networks. And so maybe Sarah, I'll, I'll pass it to you first, just to speak to this data point and just how you see a technology enabled solution uh, to kind of level the playing field. Yeah, so I think just coming back to this element of, um, you know, instead of actively going out and forcing the connections or pursuing your own connections, it's helping kind of break down those walls in the sense of you never know who you're going to get matched with, um, which really makes it, you know, the serendipitous element, but also it just kind of creates that opportunity for people who may not have otherwise been connected or may not have otherwise had an opportunity to meet to come together. So I really think that, you know, from that perspective, it's, there's been huge benefit. One of the other things that comes to mind for me is I think about, you know, some of the groups that have benefited the most in a remote working environment. We know that women, you know, had bigger benefits, similarly racialized communities. There were some things that were made better for them in their overall experience. So just creating a more inclusive kind of working experience for them. And so as I think about that, you know, there are just tremendous benefits to be gained, but as we move to more of a hybrid or people coming back to the office, we need to make sure that everybody stays connected so that we can keep those benefits that we've gained and also keep that connection. So I think about, you know, there's got to be the focus on shaping the right in-person experience, but there's also got to be a focus on shaping that, that connection and that remote experience so that we don't lose those other benefits gained. So, so those are some of the things that really stand out to me. You know, that's that's awesome. I think it uh, it kind of goes back to some of those impacted groups from the previous poll, whether it's new hires or others, to create experiences for all all people. And maybe just as a as a, a how it works, like uh, Sarah, if you're describing to a group of new hires, like specifically kind of how this program actually works, maybe you could just walk people through the journey of how they kind of discover it from the different hubs and and how they get access to the experiences. Yeah, for sure. So a couple of things um, right away, it's part of the onboarding experience So people are introduced to the, the tool and how they can go and sign up. And I think for me, as I'm onboarding, onboarding new members to my team, it's really about encouraging them to go and sign up. What I also love is PwC is actively kind of featuring stories on our internet site that's highlighting some of the really cool things that are that have resulted from those meaningful connections. So right away, you're kind of catching people in terms of how it's benefited others. And um, as I said, really kind of pointing people to the tool, talking to them a little bit about you put in what you have to offer, you put in what you're looking for, and others have done the same. And that's really what's going to generate, you know, how the connections are made. So it aligns to some of the, the goals that you have for yourself, either personally, professionally within the organization. So it can really help you kind of advance those goals against those goals as well. So maybe that would be my my elevator pitch. <laughs> That's awesome. And we often say with all of our partners, it, it kind of lives in all those key employee touch points. Like Sula at the top mentioned how connection is critical for onboarding, for career mobility, for, and so all those different touch points, whether it's on Microsoft Teams or Workday, 
you can add your 10KC, your Connection Central program. So it just deals a part of it. And a lot of times people are like, do we, do we want to call it 10KC or Connection Central? And for us, all of our clients often call it their own thing, right? So PwC Connection Central is such a, a known entity across, uh, across the firm. Uh, and I thought maybe we'd just flip to, to this slide to talk through some of the, the measures of success. And Sula, maybe you can speak to some of these and just some of the the impact metrics that your team's looking at and, and keeping an eye on. Sure, um, you know, happy to do that. It, yeah, it's like since launching Connection Central, uh, it has been an amazing success to our overall employee experience and, and a key differentiator, we, we believe, uh, especially in this era era of uh, hybrid work, campus network, era of hybrid working. Um, yeah, and since we launched it in October 2021, we've had almost 20,000 connections made and a 96% favorable rating from our partners and uh, employees who have participated in office hours. So, you know, our adoption has been great and it's a benchmark that continues to exceed um, external benchmarks as well. So very, very proud of, of the adoption within, um, within our organization over the past year. And, you know, we're really looking at continuing to encourage our people to use the program like as uh, Sarah mentioned, you know, we regularly feature stories about meaningful connections that you know that we're making it across PwC on our internal um, on our internal website. So you know, it's a uh, it's a very important it's become a very important aspect of our of our day in the life of of the way you work and the way you want to connect. And you know, we feature stories like you know how a partner and a manager's meaningful connection led to new opportunities. You know, we we discovered that um, there was a, a connection central reconnect that reconnected two people who hadn't seen each other for many many years. So there's some real personal things that um, that happen, personal and business that that happen um, on this platform that continue to shape our brand as an employer who um, cares about connection, who cares about what our what our, um, our our people want and and what's important to them. And, uh, you know, and we find it a very positive, um, a very positive sign that, you know, as we, you know, as staff regularly engage in, you know, in, um, in this section, especially the engage in terms of commenting on stories, it inspires others to share. So we want that ability to uh, encourage people to share what's on their mind, share what's important to them. And uh, again, this platform has enabled that and this continues to reinforce our brand as, um, as uh, you know, as a firm that, that really truly believes and supports connection at the human level. Yeah, that's I mean a huge congrats to the to the team for these metrics. I think as people are considering what type of place they might want to join or where they'd like to stay, connection is like top three. And the fact that there's all different people creating uh, over nineteen thousand connections, yeah. and I think interesting around that is it's a 96% uh, as rated by the PwC users have rated them as a valuable connection. And I think that's the, the thing we should you know, take a moment and, and celebrate in many ways because so often people might be sitting there with Excel spreadsheets trying to match their new hires to people. And it's not only so much work, but it's also usually really hard to play career Cupid and try to match people together, but it's so important for their success. And so to see such a volume across uh, nearly 80% of the firm with a 96% quality score is just a huge testament to, to help people you know, know that when they join PwC, they're, they're gonna have those networks. And, and what I, think, I like about that, sorry, yeah, I, I, go I ahead. Like that it's, um, that it removes bias, it removes assumptions, it removes, um, other subtle expectations, who knows, right? We have, we all have bias inside of us. So I think um, I think this that's an important way to 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 make connections that are that are diverse, inclusive, bias free, and that supports support us all to you know to get to know each other in those in in a in an unbiased way. So I, I really value that. Yeah, well, well said. And I think the bias, if you were to do an audit of most organizations, uh, networking or connection strategies, it's probably one of the places with the highest bias. And a lot of times that doesn't, it's not intentional, 
But the reality is, is if we think about that stat where men are 12 times more likely to hesitate to meet with a woman than a, a male colleague, there's a lot of bias there. And again, a lot of times we have to assume the best intention, but we've got to remove the bias from that process. And it's everywhere. It's onboarding, it's diversity networks, it's promotion and succession. So um, really, really well said on that. And what I thought I'd do is, is uh, a bit of a, a spontaneous question I know is coming through with a lot of people is just leader engagement. And we've talked about how you've engaged leaders through your group matching, but culture lives and dies on leaders. Whether leaders are engaged or not is really where things unfold. And I thought I'd just share this slide here, which just shows how strong the leadership team is across PwC. And would love to hear a bit, uh, uh, and maybe Sarah, it's a, a good one for you just being so close to all the different colleagues. Um, and I know Sula, you are as well, but Sarah, what are you hearing about office hours and, uh, and, and anything you'd love to share with, with some of these incredible stats? Yeah, sure. So I think for the office hours specifically, I mean, there's such a wealth of knowledge across this organization and being able to share, share. I know there was one um, that one of our colleagues did on, on conflict management. There's just so many different topics that, you know, we've got expertise in and being able to share that perspective with employees. I think it's in a smaller setting where they can ask questions is just providing a really great learning experience that's helping kind of engage and support people on a day-to-day. -day. Some of the other things just around, um, you know, a variety of hot topics were in the, the business of knowledge. So there's always something new and emerging that we want to share or get the message out about. So it's a great way to do that. And also it's a great kind of opportunity for Pulse. So getting feedback on key topics, engaging employees. So it's not just about push communications and spreading messages. It's also about engaging employees, making them feel like they're part of a conversation, and really, again, having that employee voice be reflected in the decisions that are being made across the organization. Yeah, well, well said. And I think something that, that I thought we'd, we'd give a shout out to the entire team on again is just the, the diversity of the networks that have been created. And so often in professional services, people may be like, well, everyone's just so busy going to client meetings. How do they possibly find time for this? But it's actually at, at the core of these connections is a way to be a fully connected firm and bring the best client experiences. And so maybe you know, I'll let either of you take this question, but to, to speak to some of these stats and just how you've been thinking about creating the diversity and connections to go across roles and locations uh, yeah, how did you think of of, of Connection Central's kind of strategy and 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 breaking down those silos? I don't know. Maybe Sarah, I'll, I'll let you go first, and then Sue, I'll let you jump in from there. So, um, I would actually I might defer to Sula on this one just because I haven't wasn't involved so much in the strategy and the behind the scenes kind of thinking through how we wanted to achieve some of these goals. Um, so maybe I will actually ask Sula. Sure, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I think I guess I mentioned at the uh, I think at the outset, one of the um one of the starting points was with our BIPOC community, our resource, one of our resource group. So one of the uh one of the the fundamental pillars of again of our of our overall approach to our people strategy and our value proposition is in addition to connectivity, is our, is around inclusion, diversity, and building that sense of belonging. So truly looking at uh, what's important to um, to our people in, a, in the various cohorts is really important to us. So part of the strategy was to was to um, uh, get resource groups to be to participate in uh, like our different inclusion networks as it's put up here to participate and to reach out to them and to get feedback and to get you know have ask managing sessions roll out office hours like go go like basically target target specific networks so that we can understand what are, you know, what is being said and what's important to them. So that is one of the, one of the strategies. The other was around um, understanding well, what kind of skills and, and um, development opportunities do we want to, do we want to be able to push out en masse to, uh, to our, uh, uh, our people. So having sessions around, for example, um, how to leverage benefits, how to leverage some of the, of the training and development opportunities that we have. 
being able to roll out things that we believe are important, we view, you know, we want to be that, that part of our, that, make that part of our strategy as well. So it's, you know, it, you know, so back and we look at it, so what could we actually leverage this platform for? Connection, clearly, to get to know each other and to really drive um, that, that in human replicating that, that in-person real, real connection. And others, uh, the other is about being able to reach um, diverse perspectives and ensure that we've got um, inclusion and belonging top of our, um, of our minds as we, as we continue to roll out our, our strategies, our people's strategies, et cetera. And then also how we want to be able to, to enable people to develop and grow. So those are, you know, some of the, the things that we're, that we're looking to be able to really drive um, and ensure that we provide opportunities like through the asking anything sessions, through those in off, um, office hours, so that we can get that kind of activity going on a regular basis. So that's really, um, I think, ultimately what our strategy was representing. Like, you know, we've got scheduled sessions and calendars, you know, we've got, you know, we leverage it from a, uh, an intentional pre-scheduling for the year, but then also clearly uh, there's opportunities for that, that random opportunities as we, as um, initiatives, et cetera, come about. So it's a, it's a bit um, intentional. And then there's, a, there's a, let's see what happens through the, through the algorithms and the randomness of the, of the solution as well. So uh, I hope that, that answers the question. That's perfect. Yeah, so many different types of connections that, that can happen. And I know we're, we're somehow flying through time. So I'm gonna skip ahead a bit because uh, one of the things I've enjoyed in my catch-ups with Sarah and Sula is just how there's so many different clients that they both work with that are solving similar things. And so maybe we'll just hop to this question and think about what are some of the people or talent challenges that your clients are seeing uh, that these types of solutions uh, can help? Yeah, maybe maybe I can go first on this one. So um, I want to actually come back to one of the the poll responses that we that around some of the challenges and you know maintaining culture and engagement are some of some of the things that people are our organizations are struggling with today. And I would say that that's consistent with what we're seeing as well. And one of the big challenges that's really kind of come to the forefront is there's a bit of a growing divide between leaders and employees. So what leaders kind of see as the experience or believe the experience to be, believe the culture to be, isn't necessarily consistent with the experience that employees are having or what employees are experiencing on the day-to-day. -day. And I think a lot of this comes back to, if you think, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, everyone was trying to figure it out. There was a lot to navigate both at work and at home. And what we saw is there was a lot more of a len leniency on, or we kind of shifted to more of a push communication style. So there was a lot of messages that were flowing out to employees and we weren't really kind of hearing from them around, you know, what matters, what are the things that they're looking for? And so, or what's the reality of the day-to-day -day that they're having? And so that growing kind of divide between leaders and employee is a real contributor to some of the engagement challenges we're seeing and also some of the cultural challenges because ultimately, as you said, Dave, leaders set the tone for culture. And if I'm not having that day-to-day -day kind of interaction or a frequent connection with my leaders, then it's kind of whatever I'm experiencing on, a day -day, on the day-to-day. -day. And those two things may not be kind of consistent. So what I love is that I really view kind of 10KC as a great solution to help get at some of this. It's creating the dialogue. It's hearing from employees directly and having those more meaningful connections to help get people more engaged, make sure they feel like they have a voice and some of the things that are just so important. Some of the other things that we're seeing as a challenge that, you know, clients are grappling with is hybrid working. Hot topic <laughs> <laughs> but a lot, there's not a ton of research around, you know, what is the right best way to do this? And so I think what's really interesting around that is, you know, there seems to be quite a bit of focus on the in-person elements, but I think we really need to make sure that it's balanced. So if we are going down the road of hybrid, making sure we're taking steps to invest in both our remote strategy and our in-person strategy, so that it's not just, you know, dependent on on that in-person piece and if, because that can't be the only thing that drives connection. So as I think about some of the challenges, it's about how do we get hybrid right? And it's also about how do we bring people kind of 
closer together so that we can get more of that connection, that collaboration and the things that are really, really important for our employees. So those are some of the things that I'm definitely hearing people struggle with. Um, and again, I just come back to, this is a great way to open those lines of communication and start breaking down the barriers. Yeah, well said. I think in hybrid as well, right? A lot of times what we hear from clients is the worst time to often build a new relationship is when you're trying to work through a tough problem. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better to have had relationships Absolutely. proactively so that when you get into a room to solve a tough problem, you've got that trust and, and those relationships there. And I think that's the beautiful aspects of hybrid is we can use digital technology or that layer like Chris described at the start to to make those connections so that when people are hopping into a boardroom together, physically or remotely or hybrid, uh, they have those, those networks. Excellent. And so, somehow we've, we're, we're almost at time. And I think uh, one of the final questions I wanted to pass to Sula is just what's next for the connectivity strategy at the firm. And maybe a, another buzzer beater Sula is just what advice would you give to your peers who are joining this webinar on how to think about their next step in connectivity. Yeah, no, that's a uh, yeah, great question. And, and um, you know, our, our people strategy and our value proposition, like I said, is top of mind. That's a uh, top priority that, uh, that, I, that I opened with um, in my remarks when we started our, the webinar. Um, the pillars of our strategy are, you know, like I mentioned, meaningful connections, meaningful rewards, and meaningful work. We get all that right. We enable our people to have meaningful career growth at PwC. And the meaningful connections uh, part of our people strategy is continue to create that culture where people feel like they can they belong and be their authentic selves. Uh, so that means, you know, a key element of what's next for our strategy is identifying and addressing systemic barriers to inclusion, belonging, and creating that psychologically safe workplace. And again, we will leverage 10KC to uh, hear what's on people's minds and understand what's really important around um, around those specific elements. And um, continuing to create an environment where we're listening around uh, what's important from a rewards perspective that's rooted in you know, personalization, inclusiveness, and choice. And again, leveraging the platform um, for, uh, for input into, into, into what, you know, what's part of our, our value proposition for that. Um, you know, I think what's really ultimately uh, important around, around these connections is that it connects to growth. And you know we're you know we want people to feel like they can build a career with purpose at PwC, where ultimately benefits are ourselves individually as people who are here trying to grow our careers, but also our clients. And you know by developing effective, diverse, and inclusive leaders at all levels with the skills they need to perform and advance in this environment of continuous change, it benefits us all uh, to be resilient and to be agile and to be connected to one another. So. These are elements in terms of our strategy that we're going to continue to to grow in, and um, and reflect on and continue to advance. And I think my um, you know maybe some words of wisdom is it is it is contextual. I think it's really important to look at um, your particular organization, look at what's important for your strategy, what's important, uh, what are the important pillars of of how you're looking to grow and develop your organization, where it's heading in the future, and drive connection as a central theme and a central element of that because connecting to purpose and connecting to the organizational North Star is an absolute imperative for connecting the hearts and the minds of our people. And we do that through connection. So I would, you know, just strongly suggest, you know, like ask, asking your organization, asking your people, what do they want to see? How do they want to connect? How can you make more of that, that human connection to drive the strategy and to drive our own personal growth and development where we are? With that. You know, well said. Well, Sarah and Sula, thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, to address all these topics and a big congratulations for this incredible element of your employee experience and, and impacting thousands of colleagues to get those networks and relationships that are so core to their own belonging and success, but also the firm's. So congrats on, on all of your success and thanks for, for joining for this. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you.